Hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Uh, I'm Audra Martin Merrick. I'm a secretary of the Drupal Association Board, and I am I'm very happy to welcome you all to this session. Um, you may have heard about the Olivero theme, which is an official Drupal core initiative uh, to create a fresh and modern default theme for Drupal. Uh, Mike Herschel and Putra Bona, uh, Bonacorsi um, are here to discuss the whole history and future plans. Um, and I'm very excited to welcome to the stage, Mike and Putra. Um, throughout, uh, if you want to ask some questions, you can put them in the chat. And uh, if we've got time at the end, we'll get to them. All right, over to you, Mike and Putra. Welcome. Thank you, Aja. Um, yeah, thank you, yeah. Aja. Yeah, so uh, this is turning a wild idea into a core initiative. Uh, and we're talking about the Olivero theme. And so uh, basically, like, we're going to talk about our process of taking our wild idea and putting it into, into an official strategic initiative. And the thought process is, like, you can hopefully take your wild idea and make this into an initiative and get it into core, too if that happens. And so I also want to give like a huge th shout out to everyone who made this possible. And that that's especially the Drupal Association. I've talked to like, I think like people from 18 countries, which is completely wild, places like Bolivia and Cameroon and Rwanda. And I've talked to people from there and I like my mind's been blown. This is it's definitely not a substitute to like meeting people in real life because I miss you all. But at the same time, like this is really, really amazing. Yeah, and I just wanted to echo the same testament as well too. Um, especially during these challenging times, I'm so glad that we're still able to get together, um, whether you know in this virtual conference, and still be able to share ideas and also um, be involved um, in this amazing community. So thank you to um, the Jubu community. Yeah, totally. So uh, my name is Mike Herschel. I'm a senior front end developer at Lullabot, and you can find me on Twitter at Mike Herschel. Hi, my name is Putra Bonacorsi. I am the technical project manager at Lullabot and also a formerly front end developer as well too. Um, you can also find my handle at Putra Bon um, and my website, I am putra.com as well too. Yeah, so uh, as stated, we work at Lullabot. Lullabot's a strategy design and development company, and we also do support and maintenance, which is relatively new if you're into that type of thing. Uh, we tend to do like strategy, and when we do strategy, we always like mix around cards like this picture. And we also make websites, and here's uh, some screenshots of <laughs> websites if you've never seen one before. <laughs> and yeah, and we're essentially the leads of the Alvaro Initiative. Um, so for this particular session, um, we'll be going over um, how we actually found our ideas as well too, and also identifying whether or not um, the, your ideas in the works. We're also gonna be putting together your, um, or going over how we put together our initial team in addition to identifying stakeholders. Uh, we're also gonna be walking you guys through our design and also documentation process in addition to how you can submit your formal proposal to the community. And at the end of the presentation, we'll give you a sneak peek of the Alvaro theme as well too, um, as far as the current updates that we have so far. Um, so yeah, um, so this is essentially just a quick outline of what we are gonna be discussing today. So I'll hand yep. this back to Mike as well too, just so he can talk about the beginning of our idea. Yeah, totally. So thank you. Um, yeah, so let's talk about like finding your idea and maybe like how we found our idea. So um, what are you passionate about? You know, um, for us, we were passionate about like making Drupal look good. Drupal is this amazing, amazing content management system, but Bartik is a little bit older, you know, it, it, it was it was great for a very long time, but it's kind of getting a little bit dated, you know, and uh, something else is like, what are you good at? I am, uh, I'm not the best back end developer ever, but I am a, a fairly competent front end developer. And so that, you know, I, I can I can work on this. And I also have access to like designers through my work and, and things like that. And um, a, a third a third item to think about is, is someone already working on your stuff you know, or your idea. If someone's working on it, well, you know, it's time to join forces. So for Olivero, this kind of started last year at DrupalCon Seattle. And I, this kind of reiterates like the importance of these meetings are between all of us, you know. Um, so I ended up having this conversation. I was with Putra, Lowry, Angie. Lowry Eskola is the front end maintainer 
for uh, Drupal, if you're not familiar with it. And Angie Byron, AKA Webchick, is everything to Drupal. And we ended up having this conversation. We were talking about um, Bartik and how it's kind of, you know, older. It looks like a little dated. And what what would we want something to look at? And is is that is it already in the works? And and so what we found is like, well, you know, Angie and Angie and Lowry were in kind of a, a similar frame of mind as us, and you know, our idea was not so wild, you know. So, um, if you want to find out if your idea is already in the works, the first thing to do is look for the Drupal Ideas issue queue. So, the Drupal Ideas issue queue is basically a Drupal.org project. It's Drupal.org slash project slash ideas. And there's no code up there, but there's a huge issue queue. And if I want to say, like, you know, I want to make Drupal, I don't know, pink, or I want to, you know, do this with Drupal and add in maybe this type of feature or something like that, I can go ahead and create an issue and say, I think we should do this. And then and you're going to have people uh, people respond to that, and they're going to say, "Well, I think that's a great idea," or "I think that's not so great of idea." And it's really cool because you can get buy-in from people in the higher echelons of the Drupal decision-making process before you actually, you know, start committing your time into code. Thanks, Mike. And you know, um, now that you have an idea that you like to include um, in Drupal Core, um, let's stop and ask yourself, what's your motivation and why this project matters to you? So for us, our main motivation is to create a good first impression for the users, um, which is typically the first experience that people get when they first install Drupal. The current Bortech theme has served as the default Drupal theme for almost a decade, as Mike mentioned um, earlier. And the design had begun to look dated. Um, and no longer spoke or reflects um, the kind of modern backend that Drupal ships under the hood as well too. And basically we want to change that perception, um, bring something fresh and modern um, to this default front end theme. So our initial goals for the project is to essentially um, have an updated modern design. Um, we want a theme, like I mentioned before, to feel more modern and also conveys a better um, perception of Drupal as a CMS as well too. Um, we want the design to support um, new features as well too. Um, leverage the amazing um, out of the box features um, that you know Drupal provides as well too, like second level navigation, um, embedded media, layout builder as well too, which is amazing and more as well too. And we also want the, the, the theme to be fully accessible as well too. So um, aligning with the WSCOT, um double A um, conformance as well too. Um, so setting these goals helped us um, stay focused on what we needed to do. Um, it got us prepared to open the idea queue as um, Mike mentioned um, for the redesign and development of the theme that could ship with the release of Drupal 9 as well. So as our idea started to take shape, um, we continuously um, documented all the discussions, right? We had um, regarding the project. Um, and here's a, just a screen capture of what um, many of the many documents that we have started for this initiative um, between Mike and I. Um, documentation isn't fun or exciting as writing code, I'm sure, um, but it's one of the key factors um, to us keeping track and hitting the deadline for releasing a proposal to the community as well. And here is essentially a screen capture of our idea queue um, that we submit as well too. So in this idea queue, um, we spend a lot of time um, outlining some of the key sections, such as our problem and also motivation. Um, we also um, took the time to also outline our proposed resolution as well too, in addition to um, highlighting some of the process and tools um, that we like to incorporate for this initiative, in addition to some of the key features that we want to see, such as um, secondary navigation um, and also um, other features that we felt that was um, great to include as well too. Um, we also try as best as possible to also include um, the timeline and also scope of work for the project just so that people can have a sense of um, the workload. And also the initial team as well too, which is really important because you need a good um, solid team to help bring everything together. So basically putting the team um, or what I would call Mike's epic scheme to um, to bring people to participate in a work and work with him. <laughs> um, it's important that you um, form your, your band, um, the core team that's gonna be helping you out with this effort. So 
like I mentioned, with um, any big or small initiative, you can't do everything all by yourself, right? Um, you need a core team that can bring a new perspectives and fill in areas that are outside of our um, your discipline. So in the case of Mike and I, we're just front-end developers. Um, we don't have any um, great <laughs> design skills. So for us to kick off the project, we need to make sure we can bring in talented folks. And luckily, um, we, I mean, Mike, <laughs> uh, knows a lot of people. Um, so we were able to um, form the brand uh, with the following folks um, to make this initiative happen. Um, so we have Mike, who is our community coordination and also project manager and a um, front end developer for this project as well, too. And myself, um, I am part of my responsibility as part of the community interaction and also front end development as well, too. And we have Jen Wachowski, who is our lead designer, and also Jared Ponchon, who is also our design architect as well, too. Um, we also have Mike Tiff, who is our community, com community interaction, and also um, Kat Wranglin. Um, he runs our um, weekly Slack um, channel meetup as well, too. And we have Katja, who has been helping us out with some of the accessibility as well, too. Here's a group shot of all of us from DrupalCon Amsterdam um, doing Juice Notes presentation, which I'm sure you guys have probably seen as well too. So now that you form your core team, um, it's time to identify stakeholders that would help with the proposal process, which was one of the key points um, for us getting traction and building excitement for this initiative, to be honest with you. So um, this phase was really crucial for our team, for sure. Um, However, before I talk about who our stakeholders um, for um, the Alawara project, let's take a step back and examine how you can um, identify stakeholders as well too. Um, the following are questions that we ask ourselves, um, like who is the person that will make or break um, my idea, right? Um, who is the maintainer of the issue that I need to follow up with as well too? And what core committers are product managers um, might be interested in my idea as well too. So here are some of the questions that went through our minds um, as we we're going through these discovery phase of figuring out who would help advocate for our idea, um, essentially. So um, the following folks are chosen as stakeholders um, for the Alvaro project. Uh, we have Dries, who is the creator and project lead of Drupal, as you all know. Um, Dries' motivation for this initiative is similar to ours as he wants to create a better first impression of Drupal, especially for new users as well too. And we also have the lovely Angie Barron and also Gabor as well too, who are the core committers and product managers. They help us out tremendously by um, letting us know the key players um, that would help advocate for ideas. So um, a big thank you to them as well too. And in addition to Christina and Larry, who were involved in the design process and just be there to answer any of the questions that we have as we navigate this crazy world of core contribution. <laughs> um, so here's a screen capture of all of us in one of our design meetings. As you can see, we look really serious when we're not. It, it was a fun um, and productive um, design review. Yeah, so um, the next one that we have up is essentially document and also design as well too. Um, now that you have your issue queue ticket created um, and identify the core team and also the stakeholders, um, let's get into the weeks or what I would say, um, the fun stuff, right? Um, that more documentation and design. Documentation. Um, so um, documentation not only clarifies our thinking, um, it also helps others to understand what we want, um, need, and also want as well too. Um, having a clear documented vision keeps us focused on the scope of work. Um, in addition to that, it also helps you avoid scope creep <laughs> um, from um, other uh, contributors as well too. Um, so defining the requirements um, for the user interface for the um, minimum viable product is definitely really important as well too and also helps us keep focused as well. So during the discovery phase, um, as a team, we started to conduct an audit of all the components and features that are available within BarTech. Um, here's the screen captures um, of all the available components within BarTech. Um, we use 
you know, a simple Dropbox paper to gather all the patterns to help us better understand what we were designed for and featured that we feel that's kind of outdated, right? Um, once we identify all the key components, uh, we create fireframes to review what our stakeholders to ensure we capture all the important elements as well too. Um, so at this point of the project, we have several documentation created and it's difficult to try and keep in track of everything, especially if you're also balancing um, a full-time job as well too, right? Um, so we created a centralized um, document that houses all the notes for all of our internal meetings. And that also includes um, notes from our stakeholders meeting as well too, and other design um, documentation. This was really helpful for us to keep track of the many conversations and makes it easier for us to say no <laughs> when something doesn't really fit um, within the scope of work, um, as mentioned in the, the previous slide as well too. It also makes it easier for people to pitch in, also help out as well too um, by providing um, just some background and contact of the, the project as well. So design. Um, what I've said, the fun stuff as well too, right? Um, so once we felt like we were at a good place um, with the component um, documentation and also discovery, um, we were able to start with the design phase as well too. Um, I won't go into in depth detail about this phase of the project, but I highly, highly recommend checking out Jen's and also Jared's um, talk, um, which is going to be after this talk, actually, <laughs> um, as they go into more detail about um, the design process behind the Alberto theme and some of the pain points of like design for the masses, right? Um, however, um, in this section, I'll be outlining some of the key exercises that we went through in order for us to form a proposal for the community. So this here is the uh, what we call um, the spectrum analyst. Um, this was a great exercise that helps us figure out what the stakeholders are thinking when it comes to the voice and tone um, of the, the project. Um, on the one end, as you see here, um, is an adjective that could describe the look and feel of the site. And the other end um, are adjectives um, that usually conflicts with the first one. So should it, basically, what we want to get at is that should it feel more formal or casual? Um, should the theme be more friendly or professional? Um, so luckily, all of the stakeholders were in agreement on what the new theme should look like and become uh, what a really um, awesome list of design principles um, to go by as well, too. So here are the design um, principles that um, that came out from our exercise. Um, be, want to make sure um, accessibility is the top um, on the list. We want to keep the theme and design simple, um, avoid unnecessary visual clutters um, and effects or complexity. Um, we want the theme to feel modern, so take advantage of the capabilities and strengths of the modern browsers and also um, interaction patterns as well too. And we want the theme to last, you know, maybe for the next five to 10 years as well too. Um, Again, that's a big challenge there, right? Um, and we want the theme and the design to be focused as well too, like um, embracing high contrast, um, saturating color and also negative space to draw the eyes to the most important um, information um, within the page as well too. And we also want it to be flexible as well too, um, providing options to override any type of like um, features and also preferences as well. Weekly meeting <laughs> and also um, feedback loop. So once we have established the design um, principles for the new theme, we set up a weekly internal meetings with the um, stakeholders um, to discuss our discoveries as well too, and also present them um, with some design options as well too. Um, so here are some calm explorations um, that Jen and also Jared put together. As you can see, we explore different styles um, from your typical um, traditional um, default theme to ones that are a little bit more modern, um, like the one that you see on the right hand side. Um, we were able to incorporate the adjectives from the um, spectrum analysts. Um, exercise um, and use them to help guide us through the design process, to make sure that we're on track um, and in alignment with the goals that we set out in the beginning as well too, which helps us um, land on the design direction that would be best fit this new front end theme that we're trying to get into Drupal 9. 
here is the <laughs> final design mockup that we um, ended up with. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, big thank you to um, Jen and Jared um, for putting this beautiful design together. We couldn't have done it without them as well, too. <laughs> um, so next, um, now that you have the design, um, you know, we had to decide on the name. And naming things are difficult, um, you know, especially being a developer, you know, I hate naming things. Um, <laughs> however, with the current theme, um, Boatech being named after Jean Boatech, um, who was one of the original um, programmers, we wanted to continue in that tradition um, and name the theme after a pioneer and female programmer as well too, which I love. <laughs> um, and we named the theme in honor of Rachel Alvaro. Um, Rachel had touched many people in both the Drupal and also um, accessibility communities. Um, she worked at the National Federation of the Blind and she was committed to making technology accessible for all people, which is incredible. Um, we chose that name Alvaro, not just because of accessibility as one of our goals, um, but we aspire to build um, this theme in our community in a manner that is consistent with the qualities that Rachel embodies and um, which are patient generosity and also in in inclusivity as well too. Um, yeah, so special th um, shout out to Taryn Amadero. I'm sorry, I think I butchered your last name. Um, so thinking of this name and um, helping us um, name this theme after um, Rachel as well. So, so thank you so much on that. Um, so I'll toss this back to my, um, he's going to be talking about our proof of concept process. Yeah, so totally. So, um, so at this point we have a design, you know, we have a beautiful design and how is this design going to look and function, you know? So like we wanted, we needed a way to investigate the use of like the, the header and scroll interactions on the ta on, on mobile and tablet devices. Will this work and think, w will this work like we think it will work? You know, will it be intuitive? Um, in addition, we have some technical challenges like validating the use of like CSS grid. You know, we want to, we want to use modern technologies like CSS grid but we support Internet Explorer 11. How is that gonna to work together? And on top of that, if we do that, is it all gonna be accessible? Is that like, is, is, are these header components gonna be accessible? Is CSS Grid gonna be accessible? How is all this stuff gonna to work together? And one of my favorite quotes that, that I have right here, and this is not just regard to literature, but also websites, is the first draft of anything is shit. And what that means is like, once you create your website, people, tend like if you can create it exactly the way they explain it to you well they're going to see it in person and they are going to say well you know can you move that over there i really don't like this you know i don't like the way this functions now that i've actually seen this you know so we wanted to have this first draft within our proof of concept you know and we wanted to do this and we wanted to do it in the most simple way possible you know so that that includes like just like using like static html you know so we don't have to muck around with twig templates you know we use minimal job JavaScript without behaviors or anything like that. And we didn't, even, I didn't even worry about architecting CSS. I was just like, plop right in there. I'm going to, I'm going to name these CSS classes, whatever I want. And I was actually looking back through our initial commits. You can see the, um, uh, it, it's an open repo. It's uh, at the, off, uh, the Lullaby GitHub account on Olivero-POC. And my, my first ever commit was initial commit with a bunch of poop emoji. And that was like my whole, th th that's like, uh, that's an analogy for my whole uh, thought process of getting this in there and kind of starting to validate stuff, you know. So you can kind of see what, it's, what, what the proof of concept looks like right there. And uh, the URL for the proof of concept um, is at the bottom and it's actually kind of interesting like you can kind of take a look at this it, like obviously the urls are not dynamic or anything this is static html but you know compare this with the actual theme itself and it's it's pretty close and in in some cases a little a little bit different thanks mike um so now we have now that we have the um the proof of concept um to validate our complex design elements um we need to start um to draft our proposal to the community and start feedback for the work that we have done as well too so this phase is definitely really important <laughs> um here's our design proposal for the new Drupal 9 theme um this announcement issue included several processes that um we took um to get to where we are today um i must admit i was nervous when um, we submitted this issue and i'm sure um it was the same for everyone else within the team as well too i wasn't sure 
what the response would be, whether or not people would be receptive to what we're introducing or what we're taking out from what they're used to in Bartek as well too. Um, however, the response were was like over, um, overwhelmingly positive. Um, and we were thrilled to see the excitement that folks have written the community about this initiative. So that was fantastic to hear. So yeah, um, so now that we have the proposal out in the world, <laughs> um, it's time to start setting up your um, project page as well too. Um, so here is an example of our, our Vero project page where we include the description of the project in addition to some information about our weekly meetings and how people can also um, get involved as well too. So in addition to the, um, the project page, we also added some um, contribution um, documentation just so that folks can come in and just say, hey, um, what are you guys working on? Um, how can I get involved? And um, there are some helpful links that um, folks can get into um, to get started as well too, in terms of um, creating a patch and also um, contributing to this, um, this thing. Um, we also set up the um, a documentation page for development setup as well too, just so that um, we have the necessary steps that folks can come in and um, use to in order to get um, everything in place as well too. And a big thank you to um, Claro and also Umami, um, the two initiatives. Um, they really done like the hard work of getting post CSS into core. Um, so we were able to leverage a lot of the tools that they introduced um, into the Alvaro project as well too. So a big thank you to the teams on those projects for um, helping us out um, with getting our initiative um, at a spot of where we at right now. Um, so speaking about um, where we at right now, um, let's talk about the update of the status of the um, Drupal Alvaro theme. So right now um, we're at the final stages of alpha. <laughs> um, we're mainly focusing on stabilizing regions, um, bug fixes, and to be honest with you, I feel like the, the version that we have right now are fairly stable and we have some earlier adoption as well too. Like I've seen a couple of folks actually um, download the theme and also install it on the page as well too. So it's kind of nice to see the theme in a while, but also kind of nerve wracking because we don't know what's gonna break, but it's, it's good that people are adopting it and also utilizing it as well too. So here is basically um, what the theme looks like um, install. Um, as you can see, um, it, it, Position nicely with the um, the Drupal um, out of the box menu bar. Um, here we also have a screen capture of the the drop down as well too, which includes some indicative content. Um, but here is just like a preview of what it looks like. Um, but I highly recommend you guys um, checking out this link, um, which is essentially. Um, you know, a placeholder site where we have indicative content um, that showcases the um, complex navigation that we have. Um, in addition to forms, and um, it also gives you like a list of how, what the views look like, looks like as well too. And a big, big thank you to Tugbolt for hosting this um, site and um, helping us out um, get, get our preview in place as well too. In addition to that, um, I just want to give a big, big thank you to um, the following um, contributors as well too, and also the folks that um, work on the project as far as like creating tickets, um, testing patches, and also just being there um, on our weekly um, Slack meetings as well too. Thank you all for all your hard work. We could have done this without you, without you also. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm sure I'm probably missing some names here, but um, I just wanna make sure that, you know, um, folks who have con contributed, um, you know, um, are being highlighted as well too. So yeah, so right now our main focus is to get the theme into core. So here is just a list of, um, of our roadmap to core essentially. Uh, so as I mentioned earlier, um, we're at the final stages of um, alpha. Um, but we also want to get into the beta um, release as well too, making sure that uh, for our base beta release, um, accessibility and also code quality and bug fixes are at a good place. Um, and we definitely are looking to get the theme included into Drupal 9.1 version and um, and work into getting the 
theme set as the default theme as part of Drupal 9.2 release as well too. So um, those are the areas that we're um, currently focusing on as well. So once we have everything in core, um, post core uh, roadmap is essentially looking into some of the features that were not um, in our v, um, MVP list. So um, the door mode featured and also um, color changing is also um, something that's on the top of our list. We also want to make sure the theme can also be a sub theme as well too. And other possibilities that, um, that are in our is issue queues, but we can't get to it right now, um, given that, you know, we just want to make sure that um, we have a stable theme that can be included in core as well. So I'll toss this back to Mike. He's going to walk us through some of the challenges that we face within this um, project. Um, yeah, so Mike, take it away. Yeah, so, um, you know, this is my first significant, this is our first significant core contributions, mm -hmm. you know. Um, so, and there's been a there's been a learning process involved right here, you know, um, talking about managing scope, you know, nice to have versus must have, like I've been fairly strict on this. If it can't be done at the theme layer, well then, you know, yeah, let's do it, but we'll push it back to some other time, you know, or yeah. Um, managing enthusiastic contributors of various skill levels. Holy cow, there's a lot of people that really want to help out. And it's, I'm so thankful because a lot of people are just like, kicking butt and taking names and it's just it's just pretty amazing but geez keeping track of everyone managing people being able to uh, review uh, and stuff like that is a heck of a lot of work and it, like and honestly just like kind of managing my own mental health I know you know it's it's easy to to look at other people and and, and say like hey settle down it's not that important you know we're gonna get by regardless but like when you're in the middle of something and just like you have you know people saying you know there's so many issues that are either rtbc or ready for review and you have like a whole bunch of work it, it, it does get a little bit stressful and like like there's that thought process you know that we do have like you know a deadline to get it in, into core and and there's there's a lot going on and that's something that like i've been like struggling with managing you know, myself and I'm, I'm pretty sure Pucha and others have too. Um, and on top of that, you know, it's finding, finding the time to contribute, you know, like we are, we work, you know, we work for Lullaby and, and we do our, um, you know, our full weekly allotment of, of billable hours. And on top of that is when we do our Oliveira contribution and like other contributions. And, you know, on top of that, we have to balance, you know, our lives and our families and stuff like that, you know? Um, I also want to highlight some uh, dependencies that that we need that we want to get into core. I'm kind of switching gears here. Um, I'm going to add a number of post CSS plugins. Post CSS is already in core, uh, mainly thanks to the Claro team, and, and thank you. Uh, we want to add some <laughs> some additional functionality, some plugins to this. Um, and I'd love it if you all could just like kind of click on these in comments and and you know tell us your thoughts on these issue queues. That'll, that'll kind of inform the conversation right here. So uh, custom media is just one that allows you to use like the equivalent of like CSS variables in your uh, media queries. Uh, Post CSS RTL is just a plugin that basically uh, converts your, your, you know, your, your, uh, your, you know, your left to right uh, layouts to right to left layouts. So, you know, you could, you, I might be typing in margin left and it will convert that to, you know, dear RTL margin right. And it's just like super handy and it works perfectly. Post CSS nested, um, talking to Larry, it's kind of like a long shot, but I'm still hoping we could get it in there. Um, that's one where you can use like kind of like SAS like nesting syntax uh, within CSS and, and it just makes the code so much readable for me. And then there's another uh, plugin called pix to rem and it just uh, converts all uh, pixel units to rem units, which are more accessible because they scale at different in different scenarios where pixels do not. And right now we're just writing our uh, our CSS and pixels because I find it personally easier to kind of understand. And so like join us, we need help. Like, like I tell you, like there's a lot to do. There's a lot to do. We do. Yeah. And um, so I know you can't click on this link right now, but we're going to share our slides and, and then you can do it. Or you can just like navigate to our project page and there's documentation link at the bottom right. And then you can you can find it right there. We have a we have a weekly Drupal Slack meeting. It's in the D9 theme channel. And if you're not in Drupal Slack, you should totally join because a lot of the community conversations uh, there. And uh, we do me weekly meetings. Matthew Tift. Uh, 
moderates it. Thank you, Matthew. <laughs> and yeah. Um, so coming up right after this, like, so like after we're done with our question and answer session, you know, maybe go get, take a little break and go into sessions and take a look for Designing for Cast, the process behind Oliveira. That's Jen and Jared, who are the amazing designers that put this together. And I've seen this presentation before and it is fantastic. And if Jen and Jared, if you are listening, no pressure, but, <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it's awesome. <laughs> so yeah. Uh, so uh, question time, if you have questions uh, for getting your uh, idea into core and or questions about Olivero, uh, go ahead and go ahead and ask them. And I'm going to I'm going to bring up my dog here, too. <laughs> I'm going to bring in my dog as well, too. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody we wants also, to see the dogs. Everybody wants right. to see the dogs. We also have a slide for the session evaluation as well, too. Um, if you can provide some feedback for us, that would be helpful as well. <laughs> yeah, totally. This yeah. is next there. All right, welcome, welcome to the stage, Dexter. Mm -hmm. um, so we did have a, a couple of questions that came in um, during the presentation. Um, so, and if anybody has any others, um, please do um, pop them into the chat quickly as uh, so we can get to them. Um, the the first question I was going to pose to you is from Gabor. He says, um, "How did you make the case uh, for your company company to sponsor the effort?" Yeah, so we just kind of did it and didn't like really say we were going to do it. And then we said, by the way, we're doing this, you know, and you know, this well, is going to make yeah. it. Get <laughs> yeah. But I, I think when it comes down to it, like, um, Lawbot as a company, um, you know, we're open to like, um, collaboration. And, um, we also like to encourage people to, um, contribute back as well too. And yeah. when Lawbot, we also have 20% time. So, you know, we can take, spend some time on, um, you know, doing contribution work. So mm -hmm. it's it's really the culture at Lalaba that allows us to, you know, take the time um, to really dedicate into this project. So thank you to Lalaba as well too. For this. Did, yeah. did you ever have a formal conversation? Like once you'd already been doing it with 20% <laughs> time, did you ever have a formal conversation that said, we're doing this, you know, mm -hmm. let's kind of make it an official thing? Totally not. Yeah. <laughs> it was really organic, though, but, I think. I'm, yeah, yeah, we, we talked about it. Lullabot has a very rich, uh, rich history of contribution, like like going all the way back into like Drupal 4. Like we've done like a lot of work on the forum API. Mm -hmm. Karen Stevenson was like getting like fields uh, into like Drupal 7 core, like CCK. And like all of like Lullabot has a huge, a huge uh, um, culture of doing that. And honestly, I, I didn't feel the need to say, hey, can we do this? Mm -hmm. You know, because there's kind of an uh, implicit understanding. You know, in, in addition to that, Jared Poncha is one of the directors, um, our, our, our design architect is one of the directors of Wallaba. And, and we're like, we also have a culture of just like being open. And, and, you know, we have these team calls. And I said, well, hey, I'm starting to work on this. You know, I'm, I'm doing this. And, you know, it, it wasn't so much of a conversation, but like, hey, this is what's important to me at this given time. And this is where my efforts are going. That's great. Um, another question we have from Tim is says, what advice do you have for someone who wants to propose an initiative, but doesn't feel ready or feels like an, uh, has imposter syndrome um, that is holding yes. them back? I have yeah. the same feeling as well too, going to this project to be honest with you. Um, because, you know, I've never done any contribution work until the Alvaro project. So it's, it's definitely, um, you know, that imposter uh, imposter syndrome is going to come up but at the same time i think if you do yeah. your due, due diligence as far as like doing the appropriate research and also forming your documentation and have a really solid um you know game plan going in it i i think people would be receptive and would be able to um you know help advocate um for what you want as well too um i think the goal here is making sure that you have um your roadmap in place and laying out all the different work that are going to be going into it so that other people um, understand um, the work and also help make it happen as well too. 
Yeah, I want to reiterate what Putra said, like having a solid plan just makes things better. So you can kind of like talk intelligently about it. Um, you know, you, I would say throw your ideas into the Drupal Ideas HQ. But like that being said, like there's always a possibility that you might not get like some responses and stuff like that. So in that case, I would I would say like, number one, you are welcome to reach out to me personally, like on Twitter or through my Drupal.org contact form or my email address is Mike at Herschel.com if you can spell my last name properly. And I can help you through there. Um, I can tell you that Angie and Gabor have been like very helpful for me because you know, I remember having these conversations with Gabor and saying, like, listen, you know, like, w w we're creating this, like, you know, we're exposing our designs to the community here. What do we need to convey? And, uh, you know, I think he was saying, like, you just need to make sure that, you know, people understand that there's a thought process behind this whole thing. And mm -hmm. that, the, it, you know, and, and, and he, like, he and Angie have just, like, so much experience. And, and I, I, I would say, like, um, I, I don't want to kind of put them on, on, on like out there but like it you know if if you're able to reach out to them uh like they're super great resources and like you know part of their job title i i think like if i recall correctly is gabor's like the initiative manager of initiatives or something like that sorry angie and gabor great <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you very much um any Questions. I'm just looking at the chat to see if anything else has come in. Uh, it does not look like it. Gabor says, Angie and I are, are happy to help get started with new initiatives. So there you go. There's your question. Totally. <laughs> awesome. All right. Well, I hand it over to Tim. Thanks very much, guys. Thank you. Yeah, thank you all so much. It's wonderful to thank have you. both of you, Mike and Putra, talking about the process of actually starting a core initiative and using using your amazing work on the Olivero theme as a case study for that, I think mm -hmm. is just extremely cool. As someone who's proposed a couple core initiatives myself, um, having that end-to-end -end example of how it worked and how it worked so successfully is incredibly valuable. And I think, um, I suspect we might take this recording and put it right on the core ideas page of here's oh. how you do it right. So we'll, we'll awesome. figure that out. Um, awesome. Yeah, <laughs> you say you say that now, but we're not in core yet. We'll get there. We'll get there. So, um, Mike, you mentioned that you'll be sharing the slides. I think there's some folks in chat asking. So, if you want to just let folks know where you're going to do that, we can also upload speaker slides to the nodes on events.drupal.org. So, we may repost them there for anybody who's asking. Um, in the meantime, I'm going to briefly stop our broadcast here. We're going to be coming back for a live intermission with some desk yoga. So if you're like me and you've been sitting in an office chair for 12 hours a day, you'll, you'll probably really enjoy that, get energized. Um, and then we will have a session on uh, making the transition mentally and technically from CMS to DXP, CMS to Digital Experience Platform. So stick around if you want to join us for that or take a look at the rest of the session schedule. Thank you again to our speakers. And we will talk to you all soon. Thanks, everyone. Bye, everybody. Bye.